We've called it an avalanche is coming, um, uh, prompted actually by an interview that Norman Davis did in the Financial Times in uh, the autumn of last year, where he talked about historical change being like an avalanche. It looks like a snow-coloured, solid mountain, but underneath things are changing, and eventually the avalanche slides down, and that's where we think the university sector is. If you look at the, most of the great universities of the 20th century, they all look very solid. They've got lots of Doric columns. They've been building new buildings. They've been expanding. They've been growing. Uh, but underneath the surface, lots is changing. And we think that avalanche is coming the way of a university near you. And how do you think universities should respond to this? I think it's a time for bold thinking at university level, actually. Um, and I, my fear is that risk aversion, timidity, um, complacency, uh, and I'm talking worldwide here, not uh, particularly about Britain, will prevent the universities from seizing the opportunities that are there. There are great opportunities, but if you stand still in the face of an avalanche, you get run over. And, and the report also looks at other, gov other actors, government in particular. What do you think that others outside the university sector can do to respond? Basically, to, to, to students and potential students, we're saying seize the moment, don't just think about your degree, think about becoming employable, think about how you can create jobs as well as just fit into a job and think about learning throughout life. To, to universities, we're saying seize the moment, think about the global partnerships, think about technology, think about how you can transform teaching, uh, think about how you can uh, build partnerships right around the world. And then to governments, we're saying you've probably got a regulatory regime for your university sector designed in a national era, but now the university sector is global. So what are you going to do, for example, about a student who uh, does uh, one course at Harvard, another course at Stanford, three courses at Oxford, and a third, uh, fourth or fifth one in Melbourne? Uh, will they be able to put together a degree? Are you going to fund them? Are you going to treat part-time students equally? Are you going to treat some of the kinds of learning that aren't universities but are just as good as learning, like some of these fellowships that enable you to start up businesses, are you going to treat those like higher education? So there's a whole lot of regulatory issues that governments face that they're going to have to move fast to deal with. And the report also looks at this issue of MOOCs, massive online open source courses. What's your view of this? Well, I think it's, a very, it's very early to have a clear view on the MOOCs, but uh, one thing I'm pretty sure about is they're not going to go away. Uh, so there'll be some experiments that fail, there'll be some that succeed, but in the end, students, learners around the world are going to want to learn from the best person in the world on that subject. Uh, why go to your perfectly okay, adequate professor in your small town university when you could learn online from the best person in the world? So I think the MOOC idea will undoubtedly take off and universities are going to think how they deal with it. One, one option is to recruit the stars and be uh, the university that employs the stars. We talk about the Ronaldo effect, named after the footballer who can choose where he goes because he's so good. Uh, so that, that's one way. But another strategy is to have some really good mentorship, people who work with students, and then beam in from the best universities in the world down, you know, down the line, the best professors. So your students, they could be in rural China or rural India or Africa, learning from the best professors in the world and then getting strong mentorship from the local university. So there's lots of different models. Uh, but what won't work is standing still. That's why we use the avalanche metaphor.